you're outside the truck right now, your keys will be in your pocket and your wheels will be chalked. Chalk your wheels before entering the vehicle. Be sure to use your three-point contact. One hand, two feet, two hands, one foot. You're going to get into your seat belt. You're going to pull it out like so. You're going to say it's not frayed, torn, it latches and unlatches and it's secured properly. Now you're going to do a safe start. So put the key in the ignition, reach over, physically check these. Make sure they are out. Make sure your gear shift is in neutral and then start your truck. Turn it on. Let everything cycle first. These are diesels. They don't use spark plugs. They use glow plugs. You got to give it time to warm up. Now start. So we just did our safe start. Now with engine on and our brakes on, we're going to check our air gauges to make sure that they cut off at 120 PSI. These PAM trucks will usually run up to about 128 to 130 PSI. What you're going to do is listen, it's going to sneeze. Now we're going to pump the brakes until it drops below 100 PSI. That's when the governor should kick the compressor back on. There it is, and just get the compressor back on. While we're waiting on that, we've got our fuel gauge, DEF or diesel exhaust fluid gauge, our coolant gauge, oil gauge, primary air, and secondary air. The only ones we're worried about right now are these two. Right there, okay? That was the governor kickoff. Now that we're built up, we're gonna turn the truck off just turn the key on one click you're gonna roll down your window press in the red and the yellow brakes or valves and listen for leaks unless those brakes turned off you should not lose more than 3 psi in 60 seconds okay now you're gonna press and hold your pedal your brake pedal you should not lose more than 4 psi in 60 seconds once it levels out now we're gonna pump the brake pedal. You wanna pump the brake pedal and at or above 60 PSI. Your warning light and buzzer should come on. Right there, 60 PSI. I got my light, you heard the warning, and it gave me the little um, warning indicator up there. So now that that's done, we're gonna now continue pumping down until the red and the yellow pop back out. It should be, it must pop out between 20 and 40 PSI. And when we do this pump, we're not going jab, 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 jab. But nice and easy so you can follow along with your gauges. Now, we're gonna turn off the truck or the key and remove the key. You put the key in your pocket, remove your seat belt obviously, you're going to exit using the three-point contact and remove your chocks. You're going to put them back in your truck. You're going to re-enter the truck. Buckle back up. And you're going to perform another safe start. My brakes are set. My truck is in neutral. Rebuild air pressure. You're going to idle your truck up to 1,000 RPMs. Turn that on. 950 is fine. Then you go 1050. That is fine. You should rebuild your air pressure up between 85 to 100 PSI within 45 seconds. So our primary reached the 100 mark within 45 seconds. Now your secondary will not build until your primary reaches 100 PSI. Now my secondary is building. You see my primary stopped at 100 for now. Once my secondary air catches up, they'll both build to about 130 and kick off. Now we're going to perform the tug test. The first one is we're going to test our parking brake. So we're going to put our foot on the brake. We're going to push in the emergency or the red valve. Place the truck in drive. And I'm going to release my foot off the brake. You wait about two to three seconds. Okay, it did not 
not move. Why did it not move? Oh, it won't. It won't engage the transmission. Yep. So, parking brake is working correctly. Then I reapplied the foot brake. I pulled the trailer or the. It says trailer air supply, but it's your emergency. I pulled. I put the truck in neutral. Pulled the emergency out. Now we're going to test our trailer brakes. I'm going to push in the yellow one. Put it in drive. And y'all hold on because it does tug just a little bit. Now we'll let off the foot brake. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Urge to move aborted, which because it wasn't able to move, it tells me that my trailer brakes are working. So now my foot's back on the brake. I am in neutral. I set my parking brake. Now we're going to test the service brake. So to do that, I'm going to put my foot back on the brake. I'm going to push in my emergency and my parking. And I'm going to put the truck in the drive. I'm going to place both hands on the steering wheel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull forward no faster than five miles per hour. And then I'm going to I'm going to apply my brake in a normal, regular manner. I'm not we're not doing an emergency stop. You don't have to jam it. Just a nice soft brake. And but I'm not going to hold the steering wheel super tight. I'm going to firmly grasp it, but I'm going to let it be kind of free to move. And the reason is is when I apply the brake, if it yanks to the left or, or the right or the left. That's going to indicate that I either A, have a suspension problem, or B, I have a brake issue. We're just going to let it coast forward here. Okay, steering wheel did not move. That completes the air portion. I like to go left to right. So, starting over here, I've got my headlights. That's my running lights, this first one. The second one is my low beams. Now, all my lights are on my headlights and my marker lights. And I'm going to tell them that my low beams are working properly. I'm going to turn my high beams on. It turns blue right here. It gives you a little headlight indicator. My high beams are working properly. My left turn signal, my right turn signal, and my four ways are all working properly. My fuel gauge is working properly. It shows that I have an adequate amount of fuel in the truck. My DEF gauge is working properly. It shows that I also have an adequate amount of fuel. My coolant gauge, theoretically the truck would already be warmed up because it would have been driving up there. So it will be sitting between 190 and 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'll tell them that it is working properly. My voltmeter, we're going to take this knob right here and we're going to turn down to where it says gauges. Right there, we're gonna press the middle and then turn right one time. That's your voltmeter. It is required to be between 12 to 14 volts. It is working properly. Over here, my oil pressure gauge. It is working properly. It is required to be between 40 and 60 PSI. My primary and secondary air gauges are working properly. They are required to be between 100 and 125 PSI. My RPM gauge, you don't have to name it, but it doesn't hurt. It is working properly. It shows that I am at 650 RPMs right now. And my speedometer is working correctly. I verified it when I did my service brake test. Windshield wipers. They work properly. And my washer fluid works properly, guys. The washer fluid is on the test. If you don't say wipers and washer fluid, and show them they do not point you for it. So you'll actually, they will not count you for it. They will actually give you a point. Then my heater and defroster, to do that, you'll turn all of these all the way to the right. Okay? You're gonna reach up here, as soon as it decides to change. There it goes. You're gonna reach up here. You're gonna tell them you feel it blowing out and it is hot. You reach down here, you tell it, you won't actually feel it, I don't know where the You'll, actually, you'll tell them that you can feel it blowing out down here also. Let me turn that crap off because it's not separate yet. Now you'll turn off your truck. You'll speak about your windshield. My windshield is not cracked or broken. It's clean, free of debris, is properly mounted and secured with no leaks. My windshield wipers are properly mounted and secured. The rubber is not torn 
are missing and they fit firmly to the windshield. My driver side mirror and my passenger side mirror are both properly mounted and secured. They are clean for your debris and they are properly adjusted to me. My steering wheel has no more than two, two degrees or has no more than two inch play on a 20 inch wheel. Okay? And y'all need y'all need to decide for yourself. Are you gonna do 10 degrees on a 20 inch wheel or two inches on a 20 inch wheel? Okay? It's up to you. Then your horns. My city horn and my road horn. They both work properly. And then we don't have a these are automatics, so we don't have a clutch. And this is our only form of gear shift, so you're gonna tell them it's properly mounted and secured, and it works as it should. And that, my good friends, is where you will say, I am done with your end cap. That is a successful end cap. Clean and free to breathe. My windshield is properly mounted and secured. It is also clean and free to breathe with no cracks. My windshield wipers are not bent or broken, and they are properly mounted and secured. My hood is sitting level to the truck. There is no gashes, no breaks, uh, no holes in my hood. My passenger door mirror and my driver door mirror are properly mounted and secured. And my nose mirror is properly mounted and secured. My radiator drill, radiator cover, whatever you call it, the silver part here, I call it a grill, okay? For those of you that don't know what a grill is, it's the silver part right here. It's properly mounted and secured. It's clean and free of debris. My driver's side and passenger side headlights are properly mounted and secured. They're clear in color. They work and they are clean and free of debris. I have my low beams, high beams, <coughs> and marker light and running lights. And also on each side of the hood, I have a marker and turn light that are both, both all of those are amber in color. <coughs> Down here you can see I have my hood in, both hood, hood hinges. They're properly mounted and secured. My bumper is properly mounted and secured. It's not bent or broken. My license plate is properly mounted, up to date and visible. And then you're gonna look under the truck. You're gonna tell them that it is sitting level. It is, uh, there's no leaks, no wires hanging down, or any metal hanging down. At that point, over here. now we're gonna go back to the passenger side. We're gonna come around here. Again, I like to go left to right and then also top to bottom. So, hey, okay, so we want to be in the front. For a basic pre trip, you're going to tell them that your coolant level is, or your coolant reservoir is present, it's properly mounted and secured, it is not leaking, it is filled to the required level. My radiator cap or coolant reservoir cap is intact, it is tight. For those of you that do not know your mechanics, if this truck is hot, do not open that cap, okay? It can do everything from a little burn on your face to third degree of your arm, okay? And it's gonna blow off there. There's about 15 pounds of pressure inside there. So, touch it, say it's tight. So, don't turn it, don't prove it. This is your upper radiator hose. And down here behind this hanger, there's a black tube that comes down like this. That is your lower radiator hose. And this is simply just a coolant hose. You can name those if you would like. This right here is not an oil filter, it is a coolant filter. Right behind that, you're gonna see a pulley. That is your water pump. You're gonna tell them that as your water pump is properly mounted and secured. It is not leaking, not broken, or cracked, <coughs> and it is belt driven. There is no more than three quarters of an inch play in my belt. Right here. Not here, this is a turbo. Behind it is your the front of your exhaust. It is properly mounted and secured, no illegal welds and no signs of black soot. It is not loose. You know, you can lay them off a whole list of things. And they're gonna walk back here to the back of the truck. Back here under the frame. It's the back end of your exhaust. Right there. You're going to tell them that it is properly mounted and secured, no illegal welds, and no signs of black soot. Now we're going to go back up and around to the driver's side. Again, left to right.
right top to bottom. This is my washer fluid reservoir, properly mounted and secured. The cap is present, it is not leaking. Theoretically, it's filled to this proper required level. Next, I have my oil, well, I have my alternator. This thing right here, it's also got fins on it, is your alternator. It's got two big uh, things of wires coming off of it. It is belt driven, so my alternator is properly mounted and secured. It's not loose, broken, bent, or illegal welds. It is belt driven. There's no more than three quarters of an inch play. My wires are properly mounted and secured. No frays, no abrasions, no bare wires. My oil dipstick. This is where I would check my oil level. If I needed to check it, I would turn it, pull it out, wipe it clean, put it back in, pull it back out, and see where my oil level is. If I needed to add oil, I would come right here to my oil fill cap. It just twists off. It's properly mounted and secured. If my oil dipstick, was, if my oil level was down to the add line on my oil dipstick, then I would need to add one gallon of 15W40. So if I needed to add a gallon of w, or 15W40, I would do it right here. Back here in the back is a square little box. That is your air compressor, okay? It is gear driven. If it's not on the front of the motor, it is gear driven, okay? It is properly mounted and secured, not, bre not bent, broken, or leaking. <coughs> My steering linkage, properly mounted and secured, not bent, broken, no illegal welds. I have a U-joint here and a U-joint right here. They are in proper working order. My power steering reservoir, properly mounted and secured. The cap is tight. It is not leaking. And there's no signs of bends or breaks. My power steering hoses, properly mounted and secured. They're not leaking. Follow this hose back. That is your power steering pump. It is on the side of the engine. So what would it be? Properly mounted and secured. Nope. Gear driven. Gear driven. Gear driven. It is properly mounted and secured. There's no signs of leakage. Up here, you have your steering, your gearbox. Here, let's see. Right here, you have your gearbox. It is all of this. It's properly mounted and secured, not bent or broken. All, no bolts are missing. This right here is your pitman arm. It's properly mounted and secured, not bent or broken. No bolts missing. No illegal welds. This here is a castle nut. When you're when you're in here doing this, you look real closely. They call it a castle nut because the top of it looks like the top of a castle where they got the little cutouts your cotter key that is present. You have another one right back here. This here is your drag link. It's properly mounted and secured, not bent or broken. And then you have your steer arm, which is, y'all have to come over here and look. It is the piece coming right here. This is the steer arm. It's properly mounted right here. It is properly mounted and secured. The castle nut is present. And then my steering knuckle, which is just up here inside of the tire, it's underneath this. It is properly mounted and secured. Now I'm going to come back to the truck. This metal plate right here for this bracket, this is your leaf spring hanger. It is properly mounted and secured. This big flat plate of metal right here is your leaf spring properly mounted and secured. It's not bent, cracked, or broken. No illegal welds. These are U-bolts because they're in the shape of a U. Some of them, the threads are on top and all you see is it going down and some of them are the other way where the, the U of the bolt is on the top. So my, you have two U-bolts. They're both properly mounted and secured, not bent or broken, no illegal welds. This right here is a shock absorber. It is not bent or broken, properly mounted and secured, and not leaking. That is a hydraulic. So, there is liquid in there. When it goes bad, it will actually start leaking on the smaller part of the cylinder sleeve. Behind that is a little rubber chunk of, or a little round chunk of rubber called a bump stop. Properly mounted and secured. Back here behind the axle, by the way. This right here is the axle. The whole thing. See channel right there? That's the axle. Behind it is a round 
pipe about that big around runs all the way across. It is a tie rod because it ties both the tires together. Okay. You can name your hoses. They are not leaking. They are properly mounted and secured. There is no bulging, no cuts, and no leaks. I'm gonna step up a little. These are your wires. They are properly mounted and secured. No abrasion, no bare wires. This is your fill filter. It's properly mounted and secured. The big hose here is your air brake hose, okay? The little one is your ABS line. You can name both of those. You have to name the air brake hose. Okay, it's properly mounted and secured. No bulges, no leaking, no cuts. This little round piece right here is called your brake chamber. Okay, it is properly mounted and secured. Not leaking, no illegal wells, no bends or brakes. Inside of here is my um, disc brakes, my, my brake pads, and my brake caliper. They are all properly mounted and secured. There is no less than a quarter of an inch of pad. And my brake pad and my disc, or my brake disc, is free of oil and grease. Okay, those are important. The inside and the outside of my tire are proper. There's no cuts, no bulges, no gashes, no illegal welds. The top of my steer tire has no less than 430 seconds of tread. I would check that with the tread depth gauge. My tire overall is properly mounted and secured. It has minimum 100 PSI of air. To check that, I would check the valve stem, which is located right here. It is not bent or broken. It is not leaking and it has a DOT approved cap on it. To check my air pressure, I would use my air gauge. This here is my rim. The inside and the outside of my rim are both properly mounted and secured. They are not bent, broken, no illegal welds, and no cracks. Here's my lug nuts. I have 10 lug nuts. They are properly mounted and secured and tightened to their proper requirement. To tell if they were loose, I would look for um, Rust run, which looks just like a V coming off the bottom of your lug nuts. Or I would look for silver shape or silver tr tre threads, which would, which would inquire that there is either a loose lug nut rattling or vibrating or it has been cross threaded. If they were loose, I would tighten them with a lug wrench. Here in the middle, on the back of this, is my hub sill. It is properly mounted and secured with no missing bolts. This is my hub seal cap. Properly mounted and secured with no loosening bolts and neither are leaking. Now we're gonna come here to the side. This is my driver door. It's properly mounted and secured. My door handle, properly mounted and secured. It opens and closes like it should. My door hinges, which y'all are gonna have to come around this way. I got one door hinge here one door hand up here okay they are properly mounted and secured not bent broken no illegal welds I have one two three uh, door grommets or rubber sills whatever you like to call them they are properly mounted and secure they're not ripped torn or missing any chunks my door latch works properly it is mounted and secured on the driver's side of the truck, I have two marker turn signals. One on the hood and one on the door. They are both clear uh, of dirt and debris. They are amber in color and they work properly and they're mounted and secured. My driver door mirror is properly mounted and secured. It's clean, free of debris. My steps are both properly mounted and secured. They are clean, free of debris, and they hold my weight. This is my battery box. It is properly mounted and secured. The latch works as it should. And you're gonna move on down. This is my gas tank. It is not leaking. The cap is properly mounted and secured. 
It has this little keeper on it and there is a rubber seal inside that keeps it from leaking. Side of my truck is clean, free of debris and gashes. There's no illegal welds, no missing bolts. My mirror, is pro or my window, is properly mounted and secured. It is not broken. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I don't think they're gonna call you on that. Tell them there's no missing rivets. Okay. In here, this is, you don't have to open this during your pre-trip, but I wanna show y'all what's in here. You have your fire extinguisher. It is a five pound BC. It is not an ABC. It is a non-hazmat fire extinguisher or a dry chemical fire extinguisher. It has a gauge here. So you'll tell them, whenever you talk about this, you're gonna tell them that it is filled to the proper level. If you needed to check it, you would look at your gauge. So you, you have to open it to show it to them? Just tell them it's in there and what it is. Yep. This is your box of three triangles. You got one, two, and third one's upside down so they all fit. You tell them that that is in here. Showing here, it to them, would, would that do any good showing it to them? You can, but you're just wasting time. Okay. Here's your box of spare fuses and breakers. Tell them that your sleeper side door is properly mounted and secured. It latches properly and the door or the key lock works. And you're gonna come on back here. Let me put the key back. I'm gonna go ahead and climb up so y'all can all see. Oh, watch out. That way everyone can see. So back here we have the back of our cab or our sleeper. It's properly mounted and secured. There's no gashes, there's no missing rivets. I have my required uh, DOT reflective tape. I have two work lights that are properly mounted and secured. They're clean for your debris. I have my glad head glad hand hangers, which are right here. They are properly mounted and secured, not bent or broken. Then I have my airlines off the back of the cab. They are properly mounted and secured. There's no gashes, no cuts, no leaks, no bare wires. Then I have my airlines and electrical on the front of the trailer. Properly mounted and secured. It won't look like this, I promise. They're not leaking. No boots or brakes. Where I am standing is your catwalk. Okay? It's properly mounted and secured. It is clean, free of debris. Your spare tire rack is properly mounted. No missing bolts, no illegal wells, not bent or broken, and it is, uh, it has a safety chain on it. Your catwalk steps, properly mounted and secured. There's no missing bolts, not bent or broken. Here, you have your fuel tank. You have your straps, okay? Up here, they're pretty self-explanatory when you look in here. Your straps are properly mounted and secured, not bent or broken. There's no movement or shifting in your fuel tank. Your fuel cap is properly mounted and secured. It has the DOT required safety chain and the little fuel cap keeper inside. It is sealed properly with the rubber gasket inside of it. And it is not leaking. And you do want to come out here and look under the front of your trailer. It's called a bulkhead or a headboard properly mounted and secure. There's no gashes, holes, and no missing rivets. On each front corner of your trailer, you have an amber marker light, or clearance light, I'm sorry. Clearance light. It's properly mounted and secure. Free of debris and clean. Oh, I forgot something. Two things, actually. You want to name your frame. It's properly mounted and secure. It's straight, not bent or broken. No missing bolts and no illegal welds. Down here, in the middle between your frame is your drive line. It's properly mounted and secured. Um, it is not bent or broken, no illegal welds. And while you're in here, you can go ahead and name off some of your suspension. Um, Y'all will probably want to actually lean in here to see this part. No, no, the cameras. Oh. This part right here that I just drew the line on, that is called a torque arm or a torsion arm. Back here are your U-bolts. They're upside down from the other ones. Right down here, let's see here. Right here is your brake chamber. Okay? And then of course you have your airlines down there. This whole truck is equipped with disc brakes. 
So you will name your disc, your, your brake pads, and your brake caliper. They are all free of grease and oil, and your brake pads have no less than a quarter of an inch of pad. Um, everything in here that I named off, you're going to tell them that it's properly mounted, secured, not bent, not broken, no illegal welds, no leaks, no gashes, so forth. So we're going to step out here in a minute. We're going to go up here to one of these other trucks. Y'all get a much better image, all y'all can. You're going to talk about your tires. Your tires are the insides and the outsides of your tires are prop. Are, there's no signs of. Uh, rips, tears, gashes, or illegal patching. It's the middle of your tire is called bud spacing. Okay? That is important to check. Especially if you go on any sort of construction sites to deliver something, check in between here. Because if you get a rock shoved down in here, it will blow both your tires out. Even though they turn together, they flex when they're going down the road. So constantly flexing on that rock is going to put a hole in both tires. And then you're going to be without two tires but so you tell them that your bud spacing is free and clear debris the tops of your tires the tops of your top of your drive tires have no less than two thirty seconds of tread to check that you would use a tread depth gauge your tires are properly mounted and secure they are at their minimum requirement of 100 psi to check that I would check both of my valve stems I have one located here for my outside tire and one located right here for my inside tire. They are both properly mounted and secured. They are not leaking, vent or broken, and they both have the required DOT approved caps. My inside rim and my outside rim are properly mounted and secure. There is no cracks, no bends, breaks, or illegal welds. In the middle here I have 10 lug nuts. They are tight, there's no signs of rust run, and there are no shiny tread threads. Y'all notice something different about the middle of this wheel in that front one? There's no cap cap. It's just a plate of metal, right? Yeah. That is an axle seal, okay? The one like you see up front, the one like on the back of this trailer are called hub seals. These are actual axles, those are just hub axles. So you tell them that your axle seal is properly mounted and secure, there's no missing bolts. Mm -hmm. Now underneath here, um, I will show you all over there because I can explain it all, but you can't really see it. So the parts that I can go ahead and explain is this slip of metal right here runs all the way across. It's a big sheet of metal all the way across. It's called your, they call it your apron. In the middle of your apron is where your kingpin is. Right now it is currently hooked up to a fifth wheel. So you tell them that your apron is not bent or broken, no illegal welds, and it is properly mounted and secured. Now you can tell them that you're gonna, you would do this wheel or these set of tires identical to the way you would do these set of tires. Okay. Side of your trailer is <coughs> properly mounted and secured. There's no gashes, no tears, no holes. All the rivets are present, or no missing rivets. Your DOT tape. Is down the side of the trailer to the minimum requirements of DOT law. It is visible, it is clean, it is not missing. On the side of your trailer here, you have the length of your trailer properly mounted, or properly clean and present and visible. This is your landing gear. This is a landing gear arm or handle. This is a landing gear handle keeper. Okay? You're gonna, and these, the part right there that's moving, that's called a sand sand shoe, okay? It does exactly what it's called, it's for the sand. So, your landing gear is properly mounted and secure. There's no missing bolts, no bends, no brakes, no illegal welds. Your landing gear handle mm -hmm. secure, meant, or hanger, is properly mounted and secure, not bent or broken, and your landing gear handle is properly mounted and secure, not bent or broken, no illegal welds. Now, in the back of the truck, you have two red lights and one white light. Both the red lights are multifunction, turn signal and brakes. They are red in color, they are clean and clear, and your reverse light is clear in color. These are your splash guard hangers. These are your splash cars. They are at their, 
the required amount of height off the ground on both sides and the back of your truck has a required amount of DOT reflective tape. These are airbags for those that don't know. Okay, and again, I'll show you on those other trucks. Underneath here, y'all are gonna see a bunch of I-beams and channel tubing. That is the frame of your trailer. You have to name that. You have to tell them that it is straight, not bent or broken, and no pieces are missing. Like this piece and this piece, all so that's your frame. Wood. Huh? It's called wood. This is the frame of your trailer. These are I-beams and these are C-channel. Let me out. I'm claustrophobic. <laughs> I'm not making fun of anyone that's claustrophobic. <laughs> this is not required to be set on your pre trip. But if you do want to name it, it is called an aero skirt. It is for aerodynamics. It is properly mounted and secured. This is your side of your trailer marker light. It is clean, amber in color, and properly mounted and secured. You need to say that? Yes. You have to name all the lights. Now you're going to come back here. I have to name all the lights. This dude out right here, on this specific trailer, is called a tandem release, okay? You pull that out, it releases four of these pins. There's two on each side. That is how you slide your tandems. On this style, well, anytime you move your tandems, you have to have your trailer brakes set, okay? And your truck brakes until you're in the truck. These three lines right here are your air hoses that you need to tell them are at the required height or above the required height of 18 inches off the ground. So, I go ahead and show you all some stuff under here. In here, you have your torsion arm, which is this bottom piece, and you have your leaf spring, which is the flat plates running right here. Not all trailers are the same, so you have to look. This is called your um, leaf spring hanger and your torsion arm hanger. In the middle, the big black tube, that is a hollow fake axle. Inside you have four brake chambers. You have one with each set of tires. So, you have your brake chamber, brake chamber, brake chamber, brake chamber. All of this trailer is this brake. So you're going to tell them the same things. It is um, properly mounted and secure. It is free of grease and oil, and there is no less than a quarter inch of pad. On your trailer tires, or your trailer tandem, they are properly mounted and secured, and there is no less than two thirty seconds of tread. And to check that, you would use your tread depth gauge. All the tires are aired up to the proper requirements of 100 PSI to check that you would look at your valve stems. The gap between the tires is called what? Bud spacing. Bud space. Yep. So, again, you'll come out here. Now, some of y'all are probably looking at this going, what is this contraption, right? All of Pam's trailers have an auto inflate system for their trailer tires. So when you hook up and you release the red um, emergency valve, it starts feeding air to this whole system. And in the process of that, it starts shooting air into all your tires up to 100 psi. Make sure they're not flat. That is on all of them. If you have a feeling that you have a flat tire on your trailer, you have to set your red brake and then come back here and check them. Okay? You cannot check them without your trailer brake set because it's going to continuously feed air to your tire. So, again, inside and outer wall of your tire is free of cuts, tears, bulges, and illegal patching. The tops have no less than two thirty seconds. Tread depth. Inside here you have 10 lug nuts. You want to look for signs of uh, rust run or shiny threads. If they were loose, you would use your lug wrench. What is this? Um, hub. Hub. hub seal. Hub, hub seal is right here. Okay, it's actually not leaking. They do get wet, especially with the dust. They're gonna look like they're leaking, but they're not. They just uh, seal actually gets wet. It's like a it's like moisture wicking. Uh, no, the 
It's actually like it's almost a paper gasket. Okay. That's what it is. Oh. So on all of these trailers and your front steer tires, you can look to see how much hub oil you have. Okay. On this setup right here, this is where you'll check your air pressure. This is for the inside wheel. This one is for the outside wheel. You can see it goes right to the bounce tail. So you want to tell them that your hub still is not leaking, there's no missing bolts, and your hub still cap is not leaking with no missing bolts. Your airlines to your valve stems are properly mounted and secured and not leaking. There's no cuts, bulges, or you know, holes in it. You'll do the same thing on this one that you did on this one. Now we'll continue on back here. So this right here, and again, they're all different. You got this style, you got another style that's like a two little cuts with just a hole. Then you've got another style that's got a hole here and a hole here. Okay? All of that goes to whatever kind of door securement is on oh, the rear. Door. This one and the one that's got a weird cut, both use chains. The other one that's got the two holes, this door latch was actually down here. You open it up and you comes out and it's got two pins on it. One that's stationary, about right here on it, and then another one right here, and when you flip the handle forward, it's a latch. You swing your door open, stick it in both holes, and swing your handle back, it latches it in. So, on side of your trailer here, I'm gonna mention your, they call them splash guards now. They're not mud flaps. So you got your splash guards are present, properly mounted and secured. Your door tie is properly mounted and secured. It's free of any damage. This little doodad right here, this is your ABS light, okay? If it is on when you're going down the road, it means you have an ABS problem. Stop and get it fixed. DOT sees it, they'll shut mm -hmm. you down. And then you gotta call a mechanic out to come fix it. Could be 30 minutes, could be five hours, could be a hundred bucks, could be three grand, okay? Would you notice that if you when you're doing a walk around, if you're doing a pre-trip, will it still be on or will you only notice if it if you're driving? If your truck is on, yeah. Uh, when you initially start your truck, it's going to blink three times. It's running a system. Okay. So you can see that in your mirror. Not during the day. So if you were parked, it would do that three blinks, and if there was a problem, it would stay on? When you start the truck. When you, when you start the truck, it blinks. When you initially start the truck. So it would just stay on no. if there was a problem? Yeah, if there's a problem, it'll stay on. Okay. So when you initially start the truck, it'll blink three times as it's running its ABS check. If this light doesn't work, like it will come on when you hit the brakes, okay? But if it stays on 24 seven, there's a problem. So when you're taking off at night, if you didn't get the chance to see it blink three times, just put your brake pedal on and look at your mirror. If it lights up, it's working properly. If it's not lighting up, go get it checked out, okay? It's gonna save you some hassle. So what's the red one? That's just a marker light. You gotta name that too when you're doing this. And you've also got, no, this one don't have it. You got three up top that are marker or clearance lights. And on the back of your trailer here, you have door hinges, properly mounted and secured. You got your door handles, properly mounted and secured. Your door latches, properly mounted and secured. Your latch bars, properly mounted and secured. Your required amount of DOT, your required amount of DOT reflective tape. You have four tail lights on the back of these trucks. Okay? So the two inside ones are just brake lights on 90% of these trailers. The outside ones are multifunction. They are brake and turn signal. Your license plate with a license plate light, that has to work, they can stop you for that. If that light bulb is out, not working, that's a ticket if they want. Your DOT bar, which is from here down, for your DOT bumper, it's properly mounted and secured, no missing bolts, and there's no play in it. It is solid. Now, at this point, you're gonna tell them that everything you did on the driver's side of the truck, you would do down this side of the truck and trailer, and you are complete. Are the only tires on this trailer that are required to have four 30 seconds of tread depth. All these other tires, your drives and your tandems are only required to have two 30 seconds of tread depth. Your steer tires have to be virgins, which means they cannot be recapped or retreaded. Re yeah. Uh, or re retreads. On our recaps on this truck. Not on the steers. That is one of the highest, like biggest shutdown you'll ever catch if you got a recap on the front. In fact, there's not a 
tire shop I know that will put recaps on the front because they get in trouble too. Your drive tires and your trailer tires can be recaps, they can be retreads, they can be down to 230 seconds. That is very essential that you remember that for your inspection, for your uh, pre trip test. Okay? They want to know that you know that. Skid plate. Okay? Inside here in the middle, this piece I'm touching right here, that is the jaws. Okay? Right behind it is your safety latch. So when your fifth wheel or when your kingpin slides in, your jaws will walk around the shank. And when they lock in, this big old chunk of steel here slides across. It's like two inches wide, one inch thick, solid steel. You're not gonna tear through that, I promise. The whole square assembly is called your platform. These bolts here on top, the big ones, and the ones here on the side, those are your mounting bolts. This handle right here is called your release arm. You wanna tell them all of this like the platform in your release handle is not bent or broken, uh, no illegal weld, etc. Your bolts, you want to tell them there's no missing bolts. When you're talking about your apron and your fifth wheel skid plate, you're going to tell them that there is no gap between those because the apron sits on like this. Okay? Back here on the back, these are your airbags right here. Okay? This piece right here, everyone get a look at it and then step back so everyone else can see. You can't see what I'm touching, you need to come over and look. So, that is a shock absorber, okay? Right here is your U-bolt. See how they look like a U? Upside down U? You can come around the back if you want. Okay. Okay. Right here. Okay. This right here is your brake chamber. Down there is your torsion bar, like you would have you said it here. Yes and no. Don't. Pre trip wise, don't worry about that bar. This right here is your brake chamber. These are your brake hoses. Mm -hmm. You have all of this setup on each set of tires. Air hoses, brake chamber. Frame. Bud spacing. I cannot emphasize that enough. Now this one here is kind of upside down compared to the other truck, but it's still good to know. See the three little pins right here? Mm -hmm. Those are your sliding fifth wheel locking pins. Okay? What that means is in your truck, you'll have a picture of a, uh, it's got the truck and it's got a little fifth wheel on it. It's got arrows pointing back and forth, like this way. You'll flip that, this little air uh, hydraulic here will open up, which opens these pins, or pulls these pins in, and it will allow your fifth wheel to slide back and forth. Uh, I don't remember the exact numbers on what each hole is, but it will change the weight distribution on your truck. Okay? Both steer tires, right? Yeah. Both steer tires and here. Um, the further back you go, the more weight you're going to put on your drives and the less you're going to have on your steers. The forward you go, the more weight you're going to have on your steers and the more weight you add here. Okay. The whole thing is called your kingpin. The little skinny part is called your shank. This whole flat space is called your apron. All the little bars you see running down the middle is part of your frame. After it dips down right there, they become I-beams. Everything in the front here are called C-channel. By no means are you legally allowed to put any grease on these. That's all I'm going to say. You're not legally allowed to. But no matter what color these are, your blue will always be on this side, the inside of the trailer. Your red will always be the outside of the trailer. Okay, and this is, of course, your electrical connection. And this is your little electrical keeper or lid cap. Huh? Paperwork box? No, I broke your box. I broke your box. What's that? Paperwork box. That's you keep the bills with the trailer. That is your insurance, and then, yeah, if you drop and hook, you can put your bills in there. So. That is. 
the toilet.